Hello, I'm Rachel from Dwensa Garden in Ireland and today I'm going to help with a question many people have about their begonia. Which begonia do I have? Many of us grow beautiful begonias as house plants or garden plants. They can be bought easily and cheaply but often without proper labelling. So today let's delve into the video about how to identify your begonia. Begonias are tender plants that are widespread in tropical and subtropical places. But it can be very difficult to work out what a particular begonia is because there are so very many of them. Consider that there are over 2,000 different species of begonia and each species may have hundreds of cultivars. There are also new discoveries being made every day. This can make begonia identification a really tricky business, even for those who've worked in the industry for years. So instead of working out which specific begonia you have, it might be more valuable to ask what type of begonia you have. If you know what type of begonia you have, then you'll better know how to grow it and how to overwinter it. Because they come from subtropical climates, the vast majority of begonias are tender. This means begonias will not survive outdoors over winter. There's perhaps only one begonia that is hardy in the temperate zone and we'll meet that soon. So generally speaking, you can grow begonias either as summer pot plants, which need to be lifted and stored frost free in winter or as house plants like you see behind me. The begonias with bright showy flowers are grown as outdoor pot displays or bedding and the begonias with large textured leaves are grown as houseplants. Within these two important divisions there are six groups or types of begonias to learn about so let's go! In spring you'll find many tuberous begonias for sale in packets in garden centres. They're sold as dry, round, fleshy tubers. The pictures on the packets show flowers in bright shades of pink, yellow, orange, red and white. Some of them pendulous. They make excellent pot and hanging basket plants that flower right into autumn. There are large flowered tuberous begonias often used for exhibitions and begonia societies in England and New Zealand excel in the area of growing these giant show blooms. They prefer cooler climates and long days. The giant begonias, the garden varieties and the trailing ones have a tongue twister of a name for their subgroup. It's, wait for it, X tuber hybrida. And just to complicate matters, the trailing ones are further referred to as pendula. There are smaller flowered tuberous begonias too, known as multiflora. But putting aside these complications, the thing to remember is that if your begonia has a tuber, it belongs to the tuberous group. A little later in the season, you'll find tuberous begonias for sale, but this time they'll be potted up and in leaf and flower. Place plants outdoors only after all danger of frost has passed and grow in dappled sunshine to partial shade. As tuberous begonias won't survive in cold weather, the tubers are often planted as annuals each year or dug up and stored indoors for the winter. Do check out my video on how to winter your tubers because there's no need to discard them. Finally, Here's a little note on something that puzzled me in the beginning and may confuse your identification of tuberous begonias. Sometimes when you buy a pot of tuberous begonias in full flower in summer and then go to lift the tuber for overwintering, there's no tuber present. This is because your begonia was propagated by basil cuttings in spring and instead of removing flowers to allow a tuber to form, the nursery decided to allow the plant to flower and sell it as an annual. So if you want to keep your tuberous begonias, it's safest to buy them as tubers in spring. Our next grouping is Semperflorens and these begonias are also grown outdoors. 
These evergreen perennials have a ball of thin fibrous roots and include the dwarf bedding types known as wax begonias. They have rounded, often attractively coloured waxy leaves and sprays of small, single or double flowers. Usually grown from seed, plant outdoors only after all danger of frost has passed and grow in partial shade. These begonias are valuable as bedding plants as they tolerate more sun than most begonias but are reliable flowerers in shade. They are usually discarded at the end of the season as they don't die down and are therefore harder to overwinter than the tuberous forms. Now we move on to indoor plants and the cane stemmed begonia. These evergreen begonias have been bred from 15 different species and have long stems with slightly swollen joints called nodes. They resemble bamboo in appearance but are softer to the touch. The leaves and flowers arise from the joints and leaves are often deeply lobed and ovate. Most of this group comes from Brazil and the term angel wing is commonly used to describe most plants. Now the term angel wing is however quite imprecise and includes shrub like begonias as well as cane stemmed ones. Cane stemmed begonias are best grown at temperatures of 15 to 22 degrees centigrade, that's 58 to 72 Fahrenheit. With optimum care, some cultivars can reach six feet or more in height in a container. But if this is too tall for your house, you can always cut the canes back to two to three buds in spring. The Rex cultorum group contains many popular house plants. I mean, whose aunt doesn't have one of those red leaf beauties in some dusty corner of her house? This group contains hybrid plants with beautifully coloured leaves. Mostly plants are evergreen, although a small few do show dormancy tendencies because they've been crossed with begonias in the tuberous group. Rex begonias have inconspicuous flowers but brilliantly coloured leaves, many in glorious shades of red. Bright light deepens red leaf coloration and lower light levels enhance the metallic sheen in many cultivars. But be careful, grow these plants in indirect light or they will burn. Optimal temperatures are 21 to 24 centigrade, that's 70 to 75 Fahrenheit. Next up it's rhizome begonias and they're mainly evergreen and grown for their pretty leaves. They're very popular house plants and the group includes cultivars and many species plants. They have a creeping habit with rhizomes that wander along the surface of the soil. Leaves come in shades of green and brown and like many house begonias are nicely patterned. Leaves may be fringed or have unusually textured surfaces. Grow in bright filtered light at temperatures of around 19 centigrade or 66 Fahrenheit. The shrub like begonia type is quite variable and as a result can be difficult to distinguish from other groups. These begonias can range in size from miniatures to giants like this one here. Some varieties have leaves up to 24 inches long under perfect conditions. Shrub-like begonias get the name from the way they grow with many shoots coming up from the soil to make a full plant. They're very multi-stemmed. Most varieties don't bloom as often or as heavily as the cane-like begonias and some are used outdoors as bedding plants in summer. Leaf shapes may be pointed ovals, elliptical or nearly round. Some plants in this group have compound leaves like the beautiful Begonia luxurians. The trailing types of Begonia are grown mostly as basket plants so that their trailing habit will keep their flowers at eye level. Some put on a spectacular show of flowers usually in the spring. This is probably the least hybridized group of begonias. Most trailing scadent collections are of species, but some of the hybrids are extremely nice plants. 
This group of begonia is small, consisting of about 35 species and 35 cultivars to date. Grow at about 58 to 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, there are two additional lesser known groups. There are the thick-stemmed group, where begonias have thick stems, but any further classification is very difficult. And there's this unpronounceable group that I'm writing up on the screen here. This latter is an ad hoc group of complex hybrids, largely composed of the Socotra Island begonia crossed with tuberous begonias. So yes, some of these actually have tubers, but they're not part of the tuberous grouping. <laughs> like I said, even experts will have a hard time deciding on what belongs in some of these strange categories. Finally, I need to mention hardy begonias, although this isn't a separate group, and the most common one is Begonia grandis. It's hardy for me here in Ireland and hardy down to US zone 6. It's also incorrectly known as Begonia discolor or Begonia evansiana. It does have a number of cultivars, notably the red undies variety, named for the underside of its leaves, which are red. The Thompsons, in their book Begonias, the Complete Reference Guide, classify this one as a tuberous species. But you can find it listed as a cane begonia in other places. So there you go. There's much disagreement. Finally, finally, you should know that since 1955, the American Begonia Society is the authority on begonias and holder of the International Cultivar Register. They have a great website with loads of information, which you should definitely check out once you've had a look at my other begonia videos. The American Begonia Society is also responsible for creating a system for labelling unidentified begonia species. This is really useful when new species come into cultivation, like my gorgeous begonia U614. All unidentified plants have a U number until such a time as they're assigned a proper species name. The ABS Unidentified Species U number program is unique to begonias and has no real taxonomy standing, but it is very useful and I wish it were used by other plant genera. So for example, this rhizome begonia was discovered in North Vietnam in November 1996. It was assigned the name Begonia U388. It was later named Begonia Sizemorii after the woman who found it, who was called Mary Sizemore. And now, recently, it has apparently changed its name to Begonia longiciliata. And that brings me to the end of this video on what begonia you have. I hope you found it helpful. I hope that you now have some pointers to go out and correctly know how to deal with your begonia and how to grow it so that you have an amazing, amazing display. Thank you as always for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.